don't get me wrong, the city has suffered uh, extensive damage. Hundreds of trees have fallen over. Uh, sidewalks have actually been destroyed. Cargo container ships have been ripped from, uh, from their moorings and the cargo has been spilled into the ocean. Trains couldn't run, buses didn't run. Uh, glass windows have been smashed. There's been all sorts of devastation, but amongst all that craziness that is legitimately terrifying and life-threatening, there has been some very humorous moments and it's just part of the ridiculousness that I want to share with you in this video. Welcome and welcome to some of the ridiculousness that I will be summarizing that happened this week in Hong Kong. Now that the worst typhoon that ever hit Hong Kong has gone, it's time to get back to work, you scrubs. It's Monday. How dare you think you're going to get that extra time off? Hong Kong is super capitalistic. Get with the program. Make sure you line up and wait your fucking turn for the train. Aside from the fact that people have to go back to work, the very next day the typhoon left, what kind of ridiculousness happened during the typhoon's visit to Hong Kong? But surely people are just curious about the weather. What Lion Rock spirit did they share with us? Let's take a look at the r slash Hong Kong Reddit group, a group that has come together to share in our time of entertainment needs. Ooh, that one's a little bit sexist, but I didn't say it, but... I wanted to include it nonetheless. It was pretty funny. It's an amazing coincidence that there isn't a pretty newscaster there explaining the weather to us when the shit is about to hit the fan. I did actually see this one doing the rounds and it's pretty ingenious, especially when these Hong Kong bins crack open in the wind like that. And if you want to get yourself some protection, why not? He's probably just going to McDonald's anyway, so you can't blame him. He doesn't want to get wet, the poor lad. Don't go to McDonald's! I'd like to point out uh, and say thank you to McDonald's for opening up all your chain stores so that people could have a bite to eat and risk it in uh, an equivalent of a Category 5 typhoon uh, hurricane. And thank you 7-Eleven, you have been indispensable in our time of need so that we make sure we get our knickknacks and our cigarettes and our Dr Pepper. Which makes me think because who are these people who have to man these chain stores? I mean, they're just in a, a worse off position as the rest of us. And yes, they get to spend all day in the shop, but they had to get there, open up, and then close up, and then go home as well. So thank you and spare a thought to all those minimum wage workers who are trying their best to make some of our com creature comforts still exist in this, uh, in this city. That one's pretty smart because everybody in Hong Kong almost wants to tape up their windows because the government says this is what you should do, but actually... It shouldn't do it because what happens is that you create larger shards of glass to break from the frame of a window to fall on someone's head. Who shouldn't be outside? That's probably why he's wearing a bin, the other guy. And what you're supposed to do is not tape your windows and just let your windows just break into a tiny amount of little pieces instead. Also, there was a guy doing the rounds buying tape in bulk because it's a Chinese tradition here in Hong Kong to buy something that people might need and then try and sell it all at a greater price afterwards or before you actually need it. Hong Kong capitalism. Fuck. I didn't press record. And some people decided to advertise uh, that they're a man down for a four-player game of Mahjong. Why not? If you're looking out of your window wondering what's the weather like, you might just pop in and see your neighbours because they're asking for a player. Anyway, back to some ridiculousness. Buildings don't spray like that. It's fake. I'm doing it right now. Don't believe that this happened at all. And she tapped her fingers on the clothesline before she hit record. I've seen this all before. Fake news. Seriously though, some buildings are supposed to sway. The If a building was rigid, it's going to probably get more damage done to it than a building that's just going to sway in the wind. Uh, it'll actually, actually have a longer life expectancy because it's a little bit more, uh, what's the word, flexible, literally flexible, just so that it can survive longer. And the whole building apparatus should be architectured, architecturally sound to allow that for, to happen. Although not all the buildings are designed to sway, but I haven't seen any reports of 
buildings that were swaying and that they weren't supposed to. This one, especially this brand new apartment block, is as it was made. It's great for doing the rounds with because you want to make it out to be more dramatic than it should be. To the, to the uneducated, they'll just be like, oh my god, the buildings are swaying in Hong Kong. It's that strong. They're supposed to. I showed you that clip before, uh, but I've got this one to contrast with it because it seems that dogs have more sense than you and I or those two people. They also seem more chill. How come dogs know when to nope themselves out of a situation, but we don't? <laughs> that one was pretty intense because there is actually a crane just around the back of mine that actually did collapse. So when I first saw this one, I was thinking, oh my God, this is going to be amazing for all the wrong reasons. And then you see it swing back and then you can see the man laughing. <laughs> really congratulatory and the relief, you can hear the relief on his face. But at the same time, why are you videoing it so close to your fucking glass window? <laughs> oh, and again, those types of cranes are supposed to do that. And if you ever see them on construction sites, one's always taller than the other. It doesn't matter which way. And if they do a full 360, they're not supposed to hit any other building in the vicinity. But that one is a little bit too close for comfort. Also in the news, it's official. TKO, the most boring place in Hong Kong, is now the most exciting place because you can now pose next to a rock. A rock, mind, that was part of the sea defences that was pushed up into the handrails of the sea coastline. Also, all the bricks gone missing. And that wasn't from the protesters. Like, all the bricks got lifted up, as you can see. Look at my rock! Something uniquely strange, I feel, about the Hong Kong people, where some of them don't realise that the video game that they're playing has actual real life consequences because you're not playing a video game. And so some people will happily point their camera at something or stand next to something that's willing to explode. And then here we have a woman who's freaking out because her toilet is gushing with water just the wrong way, but then doesn't close the toilet lid. What's with that? This will make a great WhatsApp video because that's what happens. All the videos get shared around on WeChat and WhatsApp and uh, everyone tries to outdo each other for the most dramatic thing that happens in Hong Kong. Admittedly, you know, it is kind of scary, but at the same time, you could have just closed the toilet lid. Like any normal person does or should be doing when you use the toilet. Do you put the lid down when you flush? I hope so, because it's kind of gross if you don't. There's a washing machine flying in your balcony and you want to cry and stand next to the window and watch it bounce around. Like, point proven. Dyson! Dyson! I love you, Dyson! Never fear though. If you don't have friends, you can just play with yourself in the wind. And I don't mean the way that you think I mean it. Hong Kong's ability to make memes is just as strong as yours. This photo was shown earlier today of a man trying to get to work and it was immediately made into a movie poster for a movie that hopefully will come out really fucking soon because it sounds and looks awesome. And the last thing I want to share with you is something called Lies Field, or it's from a man called Lee Ka Shing, who supposedly has a reality distortion field, much like Steve Jobs, whereby he can prevent Typhoon 8 warnings being raised so that the economy of Hong Kong can continue to flow and the money can keep pouring in and out of this city. And he is able to deflect all of the typhoons so that the Hong Kong Observatory does not issue a warning so that everybody gets to stay at home. Because if it's a T1 or a T3, 
then there's no impact to the local economy. But if it's T8, Li Ka-shing will sprinkle his magic and stop the typhoon. As you can see in these pictures where the uh, position of the typhoon is making a route anywhere but through Hong Kong. Even if it's quite as serious as this one. So when people woke up this morning and the Typhoon 8 signal has been lowered, that's why everybody had to go back to work on a Monday. And so it popularizes this idea that Li ka -shing is controlling everything, especially the Typhoons. Anyway, thank you for watching. Very quick video. Just wanted to recap some of the more hilarious and ridiculous moments that have transpired. Uh, most of these were shared on WhatsApp, on WeChat and on the Reddit. And um, that's some of Hong Kong's humor and stupidity all summarized neatly for you in this YouTube video. Don't ask for a dollar on Patreon. It wasn't that funny. We don't want what you're offering. Don't ask us to like or subscribe. I'm not going to. But I might leave a comment to say I'm disgusted by this content. I mean, look at those two dogs. That's not natural.